Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, through the work of the Holy Spirit. Our text today is the theme verse for the tournament from Hebrews 13, verse 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Earlier this month, I was looking through some of my papers. I had gone to homecoming at college, and one of the professors asked me if I had some papers and pictures. So I was looking through my papers for those items to send to him, and I came across some items from my time here at Trinity. And after that, Pastor Renfro called, asking on very short notice, and that was not his fault at all, if I could be here for this tournament weekend and have this message. And so, after I found the theme, or learned the theme of the weekend, some things don't change, I thought that maybe some of those papers that I had found from Trinity, my time at Trinity, would be appropriate. So, I have, among those papers, was the Trinity Echo from January 31st of 1969, just following the Midwinter Tournament of that year. And yeah, we played in that tournament, sort of. Uh, we lost to Freeport 55 to 10. <laughs> we beat Waterloo um, on a reset of the clock. The other team scored, and we called timeout. The, clock keep, the, the referee whistled, but the scorekeeper didn't hear it. So the other team thought they won. We had to reset the clock, put five seconds on the clock, two passes, and a half-court shot, and we won that game. <laughs> and the third game, we lost to Rock Island, uh, 63 to 37. So yeah, that season was not a good season. <laughs> and of course, one of the things that uh, has to happen if you're going to have an article in a newspaper is somebody has to check the scorebook to get all the individual players' scores and so forth for the news, newspaper. And that was me. So in getting the, I'd, I'd get the scorebook from the office after the game, and while writing the newsletter article or getting the stats together, I um, also kept track of individual players' stats. So the team would have a running total for the season. And that season we were, uh, yeah, Two and ten. That was, my, that was our seventh grade year. And for those of you who know Mr. Mueller, he was four, fourth in scoring on the team. Your coach, gentlemen. And our eighth grade year, well, we were a little better that year. We were actually 12 and two. And the two games we lost, we lost to Rockford, one here at the Midwinter Tournament and one at the Freeport Tournament. And Mr. Mueller was second in scoring on that team to Mr. Mark Grieve. Some of you may know him as well. And 45 or almost 50 years later, I still have some wonderful memories of the tournament and my time at Trinity and classes and so forth. But as much as we loved basketball and enjoyed playing basketball during those times, as far as I know, only two members of those two teams played basketball in high school. One of them played all the way through 12th grade, and the other one dropped out after sophomore year. We all had other things that were more important to us, or we simply ran into the brutal fact that in high school there were players that were better than us. And several of us played on the church league team over in the gym during high school, but there were no college scholarships for any of us at least not for basketball. There wasn't the interest in our part, and there wasn't the talent and the ability. Now our thing for the weekend is some things don't change, and that's okay. There are some things that don't change. I would suspect that some of you who are here this weekend for the tournament as players or cheerleaders will go back to your school and write an article about the tournament for your school paper. It may not appear in print, but perhaps online. And I would guess that some of you also keep track of your own points per game and your teammates' points per game, maybe not on paper, but on your laptop. But some of you probably keep track. 
And then, of course, there's the goofy activities on the bus on the way to games and things like that. And those things haven't changed. And off the basketball court, well, I would suspect that not much has changed since I was in 7th and 8th grade there either. Uh, let's see, studying memory work while you're riding to school in the morning instead of the night before. Uh, writing papers at the last minute, late homework. Yeah, some things don't change. There are other things that don't change either. If you're here to play basketball this weekend, you probably love the game and want to keep on playing. But some things don't change. The reality is that many of you, most of you who are playing this weekend, will probably have the same experience we did many years ago. As good as you may be in 7th and 8th grade, there will be some in high school who are better than you, and you might not make the team. Or you might not get a whole lot of playing time. Or if you are blessed to keep on playing through high school for four years, the odds of getting a Division I scholarship are not all that great. And the chances of playing professional basketball or any professional sport at the highest levels, well, that's, no, that's almost non-existent, no matter how much you love the game and how much you practice. One or two of you might possibly be blessed to get to those levels, but as my wife and I told our kids, have plan B just in case. There are other things that don't change. When Mr. Mueller and I and our classmates were in high school and college, we were often told, you can be anything you want to be if you put your mind to it. And you'll probably hear similar things in your coming years, whether it be at your eighth grade graduation, your high school or college graduation, you'll hear that statement. But that statement wasn't necessarily true then, and it's not necessarily true now. We just talked about college scholarships and prof professional athletics. Or what if you want to become president of the United States? Let's see, if you live to be 100, that's 25 presidential elections. And there are, what, 350 million people in America? 25 presidents, 350 million people? No, nah, it's probably not going to happen. You can't necessarily be what you want to be. We'll come back to that. Some other things don't change. In every class, there are students who have academic difficulty. Math is a challenge. Spelling, well, that's a mystery. Science is beyond understanding. But for most of you, the day comes when all, everything will fall into place, when math makes sense. You don't need to consult spell checker. Science becomes fun. And then going to school isn't so bad. But some of you will continue to struggle with classes in school. You would rather not be in class. You don't want to go to college because you would rather do than study. In my years of teaching high school, there were several students who passed through my classroom who were like that. They had no real interest in academics or college. They wanted to go to trade school. They wanted to learn how to repair cars or drive trucks or how to cook, how to run a lawn and snow removal service. That's okay. Some things don't change. You who are here for basketball are doing the same thing Mr. Mueller and myself did so many years ago. And many of you, maybe as parents, participated in this tournament some years ago. And things aren't a whole lot different. A few different teams, a few more teams, and so forth, but the tournament goes on. And things won't change all that much, Lord willing, in another 25 or 30 years when your kids are playing in the tournament. Some things don't change. Now, it may, be, it may sound like this is a bit discouraging, as if I'm telling you, well, don't even bother trying. No, no, not at all. Enjoy this weekend. Enjoy your basketball and cheerleading skills. Do your schoolwork to the best of your ability. Try out for your high school team, whether it be basketball or any other sport. Get involved in the things that interest you, because you won't find out what you want to do unless you try. You'll never know if you want to do it. You'll never know if you're able to do it unless you try. 
That's what Pastor Thompson told me back in the office many, many years ago when we were visiting about my, my career. And Pastor Thompson said to me, go to the seminary. If you don't, you'll always wonder if that's what you're supposed to have done. If you do and it doesn't work out, you know for sure. Give it a try. That doesn't change either. But, 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 but what if I fail? What if it doesn't work out? We'll come back to that in a moment as well. Some things don't change. Human nature doesn't change either. Sometimes we become so wrapped up in our goals for this life, trophies, scholarships, jobs, income, recognition, our kids' success, that we lose track of what is truly important. The crowns and awards given by mankind become so vital that our trust becomes misplaced, our priorities misdirected. And that can happen at any age in life, with any occupation, with any relationship, with any activity, not just sports. And when that happens, well, Martin Luther put it this way, so too, whoever trusts and boasts that he possesses great skill, prudence, power, favor, friendship, and honor, has a God, but not this true and only God. To have a God is to have something in which the heart entirely trusts. And so when we put those other things ahead of God, we have broken the first commandment. And yet, it's not just the first commandment. Human nature doesn't change. And as humans, we are by nature sinful and unclean and have sinned against God in thought, word, and deed, as we say in the liturgy. And I've been on enough teams and I've coached enough teams. I've been in enough factories and school hallways and buses and homes to know that God's name is not always given the honor we owe him that our thoughts and actions toward other people aren't always pure, that the truth isn't always told, and so on through the list of commandments. We are sinners. Some things don't change, even when it is not okay that things stay the way they have always been. And in this case, we don't change because we are human. As long as we live on this earth, we will be sinners not the holy people that God created us to be. And that is not okay. Some things don't change. And that is okay. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The love our Creator has for us does not change. Not because we deserve or have earned His love, but because the blood of Jesus His Son cleanses us from all sin. Jesus, who is God in human flesh, became sin for us, according to Scripture. That is, Jesus voluntarily and in love for us sinners took to himself all of our sin and guilt, all of the evil that we collect when we break the commandments. And he went to the cross where he was condemned and punished according to the demands of God's law for us, for our sins. Jesus took our sins away from us. What do we get from him? I'm sure that many of you have looked at this verse in your catechism class. In Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you who are baptized into Christ Jesus have clothed yourselves with Christ. Jesus takes away our sin and gives us in return his holiness, his perfection, his forgiveness. Though we will be sinners until this life ends, because we are human, in Christ we are reconciled to the Father. We are clothed with Christ, and God sees us as holy and fit and acceptable and perfect. Jesus has reconciled us to the Father. That is, in Jesus we are no longer enemies of the Father, but God has been made our friend by the suffering and death and resurrection of Jesus. The sins we have done are removed, forgotten by God. God doesn't keep stat sheets detailing our sins because they're washed away by the blood of Christ. When we do sin, the Holy Spirit leads us to realize that we have sinned against God. And because of our baptismal faith, we can go to Jesus and admit our sins 
and he cleanses us once again. Through baptismal faith, we are the body of Christ, with God as his Father and our Father. And that will not change. And so until this life ends, we have, as Scripture says, an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. As long as this world endures, Jesus will continue to act as our advocate, our defense attorney before the Father, because he has removed our sins and counts us as holy and fit for heaven because of his work. And that will not change, because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, we left a couple of things hanging, so for just a minute, let's go back to what we said before. That among the things that don't change are the fact that no matter how hard you try and how much you play ba want to play basketball for a living or whatever else you were thinking about as you were growing up, it may not happen. Or if you try something else that you think you may want to do and you don't do well at that either, or what about that? Or what about that? Or what about that? You try, you think you want to do this, and it just doesn't work out. Does that make you a failure in life? Especially when all of your friends are doing what they wanted to do and having a great time doing it? The New Testament lesson that you heard a moment ago says this. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. Now this passage is about spiritual gifts, gifts that come through faith. But the same is true of our physical abilities and talents. For example, when I was in 7th and 8th grade, we also had a choir at Trinity. And it was required that we sing in that choir. The problem is, I couldn't sing on key. And I still can't. So if I wanted to sing professionally, that's not going to happen. I don't have the ability to do that. Mr. Mueller found that he had a great love for running long distances and was very good at it. And the rest of us, we didn't want to do that. The point being, we do not all have the same physical and mental abilities. God made us all different. But we do have talent and abilities that we are to use in service to God and his people, his church. So if you try something and it doesn't work, if you try another thing you think you might want to do and it doesn't work, that doesn't make you a failure. You just have to figure out what God has gifted you to do, what things you enjoy doing in life and do it well and do it to his glory. And as the passage says, God has given his people different spiritual gifts as well. Gifts also to be used in service to him and to his church, to his people. But again, we do not all have the same spiritual gifts either, nor even the same number of gifts. But God gives us gifts, physical and spiritual, that he sees fit, that he knows we will be able to use well, that he knows we need as we go through the life that he has given us in the place where he has put us. If you don't make your high school team when you try out because others are more, ta more talented, no, you're not a failure in life. If you struggle with academic work even though you spend hours and hours at, with homework and actually pay attention in class, you're not a worthless person. God has given you different abilities he is leading you to different ways of service. And the same goes for the gifts of the Spirit in our lives of faith. No matter what age we may be, no matter what stage of life we may be in. Some things don't change. And that's okay, because our Lord and Savior still knows what he is doing. He still knows what is best for each one of us. Some things don't change. And that's a good thing, because Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And in him, our sins are forgiven, death is defeated, and eternal life is ours. 
And we are gifted in many ways to serve him and his church and the world by helping and serving the people around us and using the gifts that he has given us to his glory. Thanks be to God. And the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus until the day of everlasting life.